If you are interested in learning about the people and experiences that influenced the early philosophy of the Jamaican-born young men that will go on to establish the UNIA, then my Marcus Garvey and the UNIA Black History Short Part 1 is for you. Hi, and thank you for tuning in to Noir Histoire. I'm Natasha, and in this episode, I will be sharing the first part of what I've learned about Marcus Garvey and the UNIA. Born on August 17th, 1887, died on June 10th, 1940, notable activist and entrepreneur, nationality, Jamaican. Marcus Mazai Garvey Jr. was born in St. Anne's Bay, Jamaica, the last of his parents' 11 children. His father earned a living as a stonemason, while his mother worked as a domestic and farmer. Unfortunately, of the couple's 11 children, only Garvey and one other sibling would survive to adulthood. Despite not being wealthy, Garvey's father had amassed a large collection of books which enabled Garvey to learn to read. Though primarily self-taught, Garvey did attend school, but endured racism mostly at the hands of white teachers. Due at least in part to his family's financial constraints, Garvey had to leave school at 14 years old to find work. He left his hometown for Kingston, where he began working as a print shop apprentice. As he became familiar with the print trade and newspaper business, his position and professional relationships provided an entree into labor unions and organizing. Within just a few years, he would participate in a printer strike, which was unsuccessful for the workers, but intensified Garvey's interest in activism and organizing. In his early 20s, Garvey spent time visiting relatives and traveling throughout Central America. Building on his publishing experience, Garvey worked in the newspaper industry as both an editor and writer, in the course of which he covered the plight of migrant workers. Garvey then migrated to London, England, where he continued his journalism career at the Pan-Africanism newspaper African Times and Orient Review. While in London, Garvey studied law and philosophy at Birkbeck College at the University of London and participated in debates at Hyde Park Speaker's Corner. The two years that Garvey spent in England coincided with the lead-up to World War I, as well as other global events. England was a hotbed of political activity with regards to nationalism as Ireland and the African colonies pushed for independence from England. It was also during this time that Garvey first read Up From Slavery and was exposed to Booker T. Washington's ideology of black self-improvement. Garvey recalled his father as being steadfast, resolute, and unshakably committed to his convictions. Those examples, combined with his experiences in London, greatly influenced Garvey's early philosophy. He came to believe that the people of the Black diaspora could improve their condition through Black pride, hard work, and self-improvement, rather than political activism. In 1914, Garvey returned to Jamaica, where he and a group of friends founded the Universal Negro Improvement and Conservation Association and African Community leagues, which came to be known as the Universal Negro Improvement Association, or the UNIA. Neither Garvey nor the UNIA gained much traction in Jamaica, but over the next few years, Garvey developed a correspondence with Washington, which motivated him to journey to America. Garvey had hoped to meet Washington, but by the time he arrived in 1916, Washington had already passed away. Undaunted, Garvey traveled across America to personally assess the circumstances of black Americans and their efforts to obtain civil rights. He saw that despite hard work and adherence to respectability politics, black people were still being denied their basic rights. Black people, having served in World War I and expectation of greater acceptance into society, seemed to actually inflame racial discrimination and violence. Witnessing this changed Garvey's philosophy to a form of black nationalism that was a precursor to the later black power movement. His new ideology still entailed black pride and unity across the diaspora, but now included black separatism and self-determination. Part of the UNIA's mission was a new Back to Africa movement, where people from across the diaspora would return to Africa and establish an independent black ruled nation on the continent. Thanks for tuning in. Show notes and sources are available on the Noir Histoire website via the link in the episode description. If you enjoyed this episode and want more, Check out my Black History Shorts playlist.